Hello, in this OptiCam Classic video we will be working with solid models as well as using the uh, feature recognition function inside of OptiCam Classic to program the solid. So first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we import a solid model in and make sure that it is oriented in the correct plane for our feature recognition to recognize the wireable surfaces. So I'm going to go to the file menu and then click on CAD import. I'm going to select my solid. We're going to use a solid file here. Um, there are also multiple other different types of solid uh, files you can import in, solid type files. Um, just depends on what you have on your license. Okay. So for this example, uh, this file right here is already rotated to the proper plane, uh, our XY plane here, so that our wire, wireable surfaces are uh, pointing up. Okay. If you, if your file did not come in looking like this, you would have to rotate your solid to the XY plane. There are a couple of ways of doing this inside of OptiCam. Uh, one way is to use our transformation menu and then 3D rotate. So if I click on 3D rotate, I'm just following my command prompt to select my solid. All right, selecting a center point. This is uh, the first point on the axis of rotation. So I can choose this endpoint right here on this edge and then now it's asking me for a uh, second point on the same axis. So I can choose another point on this, uh, this edge as well. Um, maybe just the other endpoint. Okay. Now I'm going to select a uh, angle to rotate my part. So I'm going to go 90 degrees this time and press enter. So you can see now that uh, my solid is rotated vertically so up now okay so right now if I choose this view these are my wireable surfaces so you can see the vertical faces on here okay so the other way that I can use to rotate this is to select a face on the solid itself so right here um, when I right click on this face of the solid, you have a couple of options here. One for the solid itself, and then the other is for the face that I clicked on. Okay, So what I can use here is rotate this face to a certain plane. So this option is also, um, I believe, in the modify function uh, or modify menu uh, from the drop down menu at the top but this right here is just a quick way of selecting the rotate to plane function um, by right clicking on your solid model okay so right click here I have some options in here to uh, rotate this which plane I want to rotate it to if I want to datum this plane all that means is it's going to put that face at Z0 and then if I want to keep this face upright, this is actually our bottom face, so I do not want to check that. And then you also have the option of selecting multiple solids to rotate all at the same time. Okay, so this will be our option here, XY plane, and datum this plane. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and it's just going to flip our solid back down. Okay. And then if you needed to uh, position this any other way, you can use our transformation translate. Uh, let's say we wanted to move our solid here so that the bottom left corner here is at X0, Y0, Z0. Okay, so right here I'm selecting my solid, selecting my from position, this endpoint here. And then I can just move my mouse cursor up to X0, Y0, or I can type it in. So X0, Y0, Z0. Okay. And then centralize. And there we go. Okay. So now that's how we would go about positioning our solid model after we bring it in to OptiCam Classic. Okay. So next, 
we'll go to our wire expert menu. Okay, wire expert menu right here does the exact same thing as our features tab down here in your workspace. Uh, it's just a couple of different ways of doing things. It does the exact same thing. Um, you can right click on operation and you can see here we have the same uh, functions as in the wire expert menu at the top. Okay, so for this example, we will be using automatic feature recognition and you can see that option is right here as well okay I'm gonna go ahead and click on this we'll see what do we get so right here you can see uh, our options for the automatic feature recognition you have options here for detecting external and internal features internal features only external features only and uh, from 2d features Okay, so for this one, we're working with a solid model, so we're not going to worry about 2D features. Um, and we are only trying to detect our wireable um, features on the inside shapes here. Okay, so internal die features only. <clears throat> So you also have options if you go to feature recognition settings here of the different feature types you want to be recognized. Um, if you have all of these holes already drilled out, maybe you want to turn off cylinders and it will not detect cylinders. So just a little filter here uh, of certain features if you need them to be detected or not. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then from here, I'm going to click OK again. All right, so you can see here four different features were detected. If your features are the exact same size, um, OptiCam will automatically group them in, into a group, into the same, uh, same feature here, okay? So this one right here, you can see highlighted in purple, and those are the four holes at the corner, okay? So right here, uh, these two holes right here have the same diameter, all right? And then we have the last one as well as our extruded, okay? So those are the features that were recognized from this solid block. So our next step here is to create our machining from this. So I can go back up here, uh, right click this again, and we have an option to make figures and machining from these features. Okay, so same option right up here under the drop down menu. So I'm going to go ahead and click on make figures and machining from features. This is our, our menu that pops up. So you have options in here for selecting a cutting scheme. If you've saved a cutting scheme already, just makes this process even more automated. If you have a cutting scheme with technology and everything already saved. Okay. Um, or we can select that later. I'm just going to say no prompt here and we can select the technology later. All right. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Minimize, uh, redrawing, right? It's just a couple of different things in here. Uh, other options as well on this side, different ways of grouping. This is a new feature in uh, version 2022. Okay. All right. For the most part, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK here. All right. OK, so right now it's created this right here, which is our operation sequence that automatically pops up afterwards. All right. So if you want to create a billet, you can do that from here. Um, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we have a solid model that we can choose, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and create a billet from this. All right, so because we don't have one already created, I cannot select it. So I'm going to go ahead and click new and I'm going to create a rectangular billet here. So X, Y minimum and then select my X, Y maximum. Okay, and this will be thickness. So if you didn't know, when you're in the middle of a function like this and if you needed to rotate your part, you can hold shift and then it'll go back to your rotate uh, if your mouse cursor at the, is at the center of the screen. 
Okay. Once I release, it goes back to the function that I was in. All right. So this right here is my thickness. Oh, I need a second point. Whoops. There we go. So one inch thick for this part. Okay. I'm going to go back through this and make sure all these numbers look correct. All right. File name is solid. My from position, my reference position, my datum. Um, let's use our G54 on this one. Okay. In technology, make sure I'm using the correct material and wire size. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. There we go. It just created all of my machining for me. Okay, so from here, we're pretty much done with the solid model itself. So I can right click and just hide this. And then you can see here we have our billet as well as all of our wire NC. Okay, all right. So all of those lines right there represent all of our machining. So I'm going to go back to our machining tab now and you can see all of my machining has been created okay I haven't had I haven't selected technology yet or my tag sizes yet or any of that so I'll still need to go back into my different machining functions here and select those okay um, for this example as well uh, what OptiCam does is it will create a different machining function for each of your features. So that's why we have four machining functions on here, four standard profiles. If you are going to use the same technology, same tag size for, for all of these features, right? let's say we do that for all of the circles. Okay, so what we could do is we could disable or delete a couple of the, these standard profiles, right? I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these, all right? And then in our first one here, I'm going to use the same technology and same uh, tag size, lead off distance, all of that for all of our circles, okay? So what I can do here is I can reselect all of those circles. Okay, remember that the order that you select these circles in is the order that they will cut in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. All right, so now all of my features or my figures are in this standard profile machining function. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and select technology as well. Uh, let's go with uh, both away. Um, we'll go with uh, both away. All right. And then from here, two pass. Ooh. I'm fine with two pass technology. Okay. So I'm going to tell it to load. I'll go to my setup. All right, in here, just making sure that I put in my tag distance, my lead off distance, and filling out my tag removal method. And once I'm done here, click OK, OK. All of my circles are pretty much done. And then the last one is the, the square that I have in the middle. So I'll go do the same thing for this. I'll need to go in here and select technology. Alright, uh, let's just go with a roughing pass on this. And selecting tagging for my tag size. And then let's get rid of this. And OK, OK. And then you can see here, in version 2022, after you've selected those, it automatically turns on this... Um, option to create a kind of a, a sheet body looking material uh, all of that is just an option here just a rendering of what that looks like so you can turn that off if you prefer to look at just the wireframe in C all right and turn that off okay there we go
So from here, you're pretty much done. If you want to run the simulation, we can run the simulation, um, but we can post our code from here if you are good with that. Okay. Uh, but for this one, we'll go ahead and run the simulation. Um, right here, I have the older simulation. Um, so some of you might have a, a slightly newer simulation. Okay, so from here, make sure I press play and speed this down a little bit. My tag stops, remove my trim pass. Okay. I'm also going to just go ahead and turn on uh, automatically remove smallest solid so that this window won't pop up again. Just remove. And I'll just click play every time there's a tag stop. Okay. And we move this a little bit quicker as well. Everything here looks pretty good. So I'm not going to run through the full simulation. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can stop this and then just click done here and then from here you still get to see your offsets here after you run the simulation okay all right everything there looks pretty good on this example so now I can just go to post the program uh, there are multiple locations where you can go to post process the, the program. You can either do it from your file menu right here, post process. You can do it from your utilities menu or your little shortcut icons at the top here as well. Okay. So edit NC data right here. You can copy your code to a certain location. All of that's in options, right? So right here, you can choose your, your destination and then just click on this little icon here and it will copy your code to that destination. You can preview your code. This is what I usually do just so that I can see what's going on here. We have all of our offsets. We have all of our callouts here depending on what you have set up inside of your uh, post processor configurations it will output a certain way so I have this right here so it's calling out my my e packs right here along with the D1 my offset call out okay all right and that's pretty much it so you're done now and then you can send this to the machine. Thank you.